Hi, and welcome to the Life Given Podcast. I'm Isaac Lopez. Today's episode is titled, Stay Vigilant. When is enough enough? And seeing through the smoke. Today, I want to raise questions about how things are being done. Questions that may eventually turn the tide in this country. Okay, so for our first segment today, I want to take a look at a story that came out uh, from L.A. Of their, the mayor there, Mayor Garcetti, issued a statement a couple weeks ago. I think it was around uh, the end of March. And he was talking about how they are taking the coronavirus pandemic very seriously, just like everyone else is saying. But here's where uh, I think this case is a little bit more special or a little uh, something that requires more of our attention. He said that uh, they would not tolerate unessential businesses to stay to remain open, uh, as he thought that this is risking the health of the public. And he mentioned that after verbal warnings issued to these businesses, he would not hesitate and the city would not hesitate to shut off their access to water and power. So basically shutting them down. Now, like I mentioned before, this is one out of a thousand kind of situations very much like this that are confronting every citizen across the U.S. Okay, this isn't like one of those uh, stories that I think we can just look at and move on and just kind of think about in the back of our minds. It could become a reality here in the next week or wherever here may be for you. Uh, and, And honestly, I think that it should be raising questions, uh, we should be raising questions and wrestling with these questions in preparation for whatever may happen down the road, right? Um, and I think one of the first ones that you need to look at and what I need to look at is, why do I feel uneasy? Why, why do I feel uneasy and a little uncomfortable with how things are going? Is that the right feeling? So I think in kind of uh, to go along with that, and this is going to, this next question is going to uh, outline the rest of them. If the government can deem what is a necessary business in an emergency time like this, uh, why can't they go a step further and cross a line? Where is that line, right? And that's another question. If they control what the emergency is and how to define it, where is the line for us to say no, or where where do we think that they said, oh, you towed or crossed the line? And and then finally, what are the facts? Are these responses appropriate? Now, I'm not saying that I'm going to answer these questions uh, to for you guys, and I don't think that you guys come here with that in mind. I hope that you come to listen to this podcast with um, – with the idea to have questions raised, because I'm not in a position to be teaching or to be leading, but rather uh, this is a conversation, right? I'm not viewing this as uh, me preaching. This is me just raising questions and kind of talking uh, out of the side of my mouth, like where, where, where is this line of thinking take us? Okay. So uh, there, there are a lot of questions I think that could be, the key to turning the tide and seeing through the smoke, right? Now, the question is, what is the tide that I'm talking about and what what smoke am I talking about? Um, and I think the answer to that question is very simply, uh, there is a certain worldview or there is a certain view on this uh, that the media is pushing. We are being groomed to see something like this and then to panic about it. And if you if you're doubting uh, this, I I think that um, actually that's good to have like a, a bit of a question mark in uh, floating in your mind right now. What do you mean that we're being groomed? That sounds very conspiratorial. Uh, but there's this uh, article that I read uh, part of, and it said uh, the title is "No, It's Not Better Safe Than Sorry" by Logan Zapiri. I totally botched that last name. Forgive me, Logan. Uh, he wrote this over at the American Mind, if you want to search. Once again, it's no, it's not better safe than sorry. And in this, he talks about uh, the headlines that are coming out 
uh, about the coronavirus from major news outlets. And headlines like 150 million Americans could get coronavirus, U.S. projection. Another is one slide and a leaked presentation for U.S. hospitals reveals that they're preparing for millions of hospitalizations as the outbreak unfolds. Governor Devine, DeWine, here's another one, 100,000 believed to have coronavirus in Ohio, number projected to double every six days. Now, if you go to CNN, even Fox News, go to MSNBC, uh, Google News, uh, I don't, I didn't check out MSNBC, but all of these uh, major news outlets are only talking about the coronavirus and talking about how to deal with it. Um, uh, that's not helping things because uh, the coronavirus, yes, it is the dominant issue, but that doesn't mean that's the only thing we have to think about these days. And when when it is the only thing in the forefront of our minds, it's really easy to panic. When you look at numbers and headlines like this, it looks worrisome, right? It looks scary out there. And I, I mean, I think you would only be uh, like any other person out there to experience a little bit of that anxiety and a little bit of that panic, because that's the only thing that uh, you're hearing, right? Um, so he goes on to mention that uh, this is coming back to Logan's article that he wrote. This isn't – it wouldn't grab the reader's eye if they said 1% of Americans could die from this disease. Now, I'm, I, I don't – once again, like I said last week, I don't want to come across as um, as hurtful. I don't want to step on toes here. I don't want to sound calloused. Rather, I, I want to – look at what's the other side of the story. What are we not being told by the media, right? Because they're only talking about the panic that's ensuing across the country. Hospitals that appear to be full, and the reason I say appear is, and this is a side note, but the reason I say that it, it appears that they're full is because the major news outlets will talk about how these hospitals are full across the nation. And then people go to those hospitals and they find that the line set up specifically for the coronavirus are empty. You can look that up on YouTube. There are just there is a compilation out there about how these hospitals are empty. Now, um, I, I think that uh, another thing to be thinking about is the numbers themselves, right? Like uh, Logan mentioned how 1% of Americans could die from this disease. And the total cases right now from the CDC in the U.S. is 277,205. That was the last time the CDC updated their website. The total cases of coronavirus, um, the people who have come down with coronavirus are just under 300,000, okay? And the total deaths, the total deaths from the fatality rate of the COVID-19 is 6,593. Now, the fatality rate then is just here in the U.S., right? Worldwide, that's another uh, that's another th thing that we need to look at, and I want to mention that briefly. Is but the fatality rate here in the U.S. is 002 percent, right? Very, very far less than one percent. Now projections are showing uh, that this is uh, coming around that th that it will probably be about one percent. You know. 70 million uh, to 150 million Americans could contract uh, COVID-19. Now, I uh, the only reason I'm saying this is to get some numbers out there, right? Some actual hard, uh, like hard facts. Just here are the numbers. Here are the things that the media really is mentioning, but it's on the down low. And it's really easy if you're scrolling Facebook to get a lot of these um, panic stories, right? Like, uh, yeah, it's really easy to uh, stress out about that. Now, the reason I brought up uh, U.S. specifically is that that's what we're dealing with. And I think healthcare goes into uh, how we're dealing with the average age of the nation. Really goes into how many people come come down with the coronavirus because in a place like Italy that has supposedly been hit harder than any other country, the average age uh, could I think affect it. I've heard the average age of Italy is higher than here in the U.S. where it's just uh, there's a lot of old people in Italy, right? Um, now, uh, there when you search on Google, 
Italy and coronavirus. It shows something on the right of your screen, uh, a tracker of all the deaths and all of the cases of coronavirus in every country, right, that has it. And Italy is up there, I think, third or fourth, and it has like 15,000 plus deaths in Italy just from the coronavirus. Now, I think we need to look at that with uh, another, with a grain of salt, right? When you look at that, according to MSN, this is going back to when Italy reached only 2,500 deaths um, that was marked up due to the coronavirus, right? But statistics came out that MSN uh, uh, reported on, and only 0.8% were due strictly to COVID-19, okay? 99% of the people that died had other illnesses there, okay, uh, due to the 2,500. You know, taking the 2,500 as your pie chart, uh, all the other, uh, the, of the, you know, 1%, let's say, uh, that died, 99% of the people that died there had other illnesses, right? At least one other illness. Now, I think that's, once again, not to be callous and not to just come off as like, oh, this is not that big of a deal. Yes, it is a big deal, but realize that the media it has been pushing a certain narrative. And I like a lot of, I think, commentators are awake to this. Uh, uh, Steven Crowder is one. Um, and I think uh, you can just look through uh, the we should try to do our level best to see through the smoke. And the first step is just going to the CDC, right? Just going to what is the government actually saying about this? And that's something else I want to tackle in the next segment. But really, see through the smoke. How do we look and be able to um, turn turn what could be a very nasty tide uh, coming this way? Okay, so. For our second segment, we've tossed around some questions that we would like to ask. And at the end of last uh, of the last segment, uh, it counted. It kind of sounded a little um, a little nerve wracking, right? I, like I think that there are things that we need to be aware of uh, because uh, we don't want history to repeat itself, right? Uh, and that's just government overreach. Okay, that's something that we need to be keeping in the back of our minds in the coming weeks. I think that this could be a very big month. Just how are we going to react and how do we protect ourselves and the liberties that we have uh, been endowed with? How do we protect those? Right. And that starts with just asking questions, asking the questions and conversing and making sure that our friends, our family are on the same page. Right. Making sure that we're working together to answer uh, these tough questions, because this this is where I think we could be seeing more more government overreach, you know, and I think in the first couple of weeks, uh, I know our church uh, that Ruth and I attend have. um uh, that don't think that this goes against uh, the word that uh, we can submit to the government for the protection of the church, uh, not not to give the protection of the church over to the government, but rather the church is submitting to protect uh, those brothers who may who could come down with the sickness. Uh, because everything I said in last uh, the last segment, I want to couch it and say that there is still a lot of unknowns, and the only reason you know unknowns about COVID-19, right? About it spreads very quickly. And I think uh, the fatality rate is still expected to be higher and more than the common flu. Um, but I just want to be asking those questions to make sure we aren't uh, giving ground because this next story coming from Tampa Bay, uh, there was a uh, church arrest. There was an arrest uh, by the, I believe, um, Hillsborough County Sheriff Chad Cronister said uh, of after arresting the pastor of uh, the river in Tampa Bay church, that's that appears to be the name of the church. Uh, he said that his reckless disregard for human life puts put hundreds of people in his congregation at risk and thousands of residents who may interact with them this week is in danger. So I just want to, uh, couch that right because i think that uh there there could be more th uh, more um stories like this coming out in the next month or two or uh because uh dr fauci i believe has been a 
um, has allegedly said that this is coming back in the fall because it's cyclical. My, my question is, will the U.S. fall back to the measures that it has resorted to now? And if it does, what is going to be the economic impact? How is your family going to survive that? I mean, like just a lot of those questions, what is the healthcare state going to look like? All of these things, I think, are wrapped up in how how we're approaching it this time. And are we going to go back? Uh, are we going to come back around to this in the fall? So uh, coming back to this story where uh, the river in Tampa Bay church pastor was arrested because they continue to hold services uh, the last couple of weeks, even after the national emergency and the stay at home, uh, safer at home order went out. Uh, there are multiple church like this, like Solid Rock Church in Ohio. They have held uh, services in the last couple of weeks. And honestly, I don't know if they're at fault because really this there's just so much that we have to sort through and so much that I think happens uh, There is so much that happens from uh, situation to situation that just you have to really take into account. And I think we're still in the early periods that this can be um, like a lot more uh, that this doesn't have to be a universal church response yet. But we're getting to I think we could come to a point where uh, the church as a whole needs to stand up and say, hey, we can't go for this because of the spiritual welfare of our flock because of the spiritual welfare of all those involved at church, right? And um, and I think we could be seeing something more like this. And so that that's the question that I have for uh, for this season and for the season coming and fall. If it is truly cyclical, the question we should be asking is, is the government within their rights to do this, to be shutting down businesses? Because I think right now it's uh, that they have uh, some good reasons for shutting down the country. But can we endure this? Do we have to do this every single time? Now, I think Dr. Fauci says that uh, the U.S. will be better equipped come the fall. But what does that mean? Right. Is that just uh, better? Like our uh, medical staff will be better able to handle it. Does that mean we still need to quarantine everybody? Why don't we just quarantine the elderly and uh, those who are uh, have weaker immune systems? Um, Are we going to shut down economically? Because economically speaking, we're hurting thousands of people who can't work, who do live paycheck to paycheck and who can't sit um, on savings. Right. So uh, that that being said, I I want to be aware of the power that we are giving to the government, right? We don't want to give too much to the government and make sure uh, that we are on the same page there. So that being said, I want to ask these questions because of just when it is in this time of emergency, the government has a lot of power. Right. And we give them that power. We give them the authority to have that power by electing them to be there and by living in this country. Right. And um, that I think it's acceptable in a time like this. But we need to just be thinking in the coming months that if we continue to submit to uh, overbearing governments, uh, what will that leave us when things go back to normal? Uh, Because remember the last time that we submitted to uh a Supreme Court or a government decision, uh, and that was Roe v. Wade. How many millions of children died because we allowed the Supreme Court to make that decision, and then uh, those in power allowed that to continue and to progress over the decades, and now we are where we are. Remember that this country is built off of we the people, right? We elect those who are in power. We elect and put them there to be the voices supposedly for us. And the fact that something like this, sorry, something like that, that the fact that abortion can reign in a land that has millions of Christians and millions of Bible-believing people who believe that it is murder to kill a child still allows abortion to flourish because our leaders that we have elected are there. Right. And I think we're suffering for that. Um, not saying that coronavirus is um, 
I, I, I don't want to attribute too much to the coronavirus, right? But I'm just saying that uh, that God should judge this nation, right? Like I, there are things that we have done in our nation and in our civilization that requires God's judgment, right? And so the reason I'm asking these questions, how are like, what are we comfortable with? Why am I uncomfortable? And if the government has this kind of power during a time of emergency, where will they uh, give it up? Or when will they give it up, right? Uh, where is the line? What are the facts? Are these responses that we are seeing our government take, are they appropriate right now? And then seeing through the smoke, right? Just so much to get into, so much to unpack. I hope that uh, that helped um, just thinking about the future. Don't get caught up in just the present and being okay, making sure that we are thinking um, forward and making sure that we're on top of uh, the um, current event situation right now. So in conclusion, remember to ask questions, right? Stay vigilant in a very sleepy time. You're at home, life is slower, it's easy to slow down. Remember to stay vigilant, ask questions. Uh, when Ask the question, when is enough enough? See through the smoke, see through the panic that the media is throwing at you. And remember that the life that you have been given and the life that you have received includes every area of life. Thank God. Why should current events be the exception? God bless, and I'll see you next week.